What is up, YouTube? It's Roy Millsy. Back at the hometown commander reap for another episode of Hometown Opens. Sure, I opened some product for you, and we are celebrating the Lost Caverns of Ixalan releasing with a opening of a Lost Caverns of uh, Ixalan set booster box. And then I have four Clutcher Booster sampler packs from the four pre-guns that I bought that I wanted to open up in this video as well as a little bit of a treat. Um, the original Ixalan, Rivals of Ixalan, was really the first block that I ever played Magic for Commander in. It's a set that I have so much, sets I have so much love for, and getting to see so many of the um, tribes return, and so many new cards uh, alongside them make me really happy. We're going to start with the sampler packs, and then we'll move on to the uh, set booster box. So uh, these sampler packs come in every pre-con that you buy. Um, you get these included. They have two cards in them. To my understanding, the first is going to be a booster fun card of some sort. You see here, we have a Sunken Citadel, one of the new lands for the caves that care about the, for, sorry, the, the caves, because the caves have abilities that you know, that are used on them. So this one says two men have any chosen color, spend this man only to activate abilities of land sources. So you could use this for, you know, besage you or something like that as well. And then it says we have one foil um, borderless uncommon showcase card and we get Earthshaker Dreadwall. Again, great looking to build out the dinos. And I know that that card actually comes in the deck already, but I'm still happy to have um, a copy of it, especially in the showcase frame. As far as what I'm looking for out of the set box, it's going to be a lot of uh, the Merfolk and Dino stuff in the set. Those are the two uh, decks I'm mainly looking to make, of course, but I will take anything, including the special guests and other things that we do have access to. Starving Revenant is our booster fun card. And there we go. Um, it's Gwyneth, uh, Firstborn of Gishath. Another card that is in the pre-con, but still looks pretty cool. A, a card that I'm intrigued to see if it sees much play in Commander. It's an interesting card, as it's kind of a... Um, if you think about it, it's kind of a... Uh, you know, it's kind of a bite type spell on a creature when you put it in, but uh, we see Amalia, one of the new um, vampire legendaries, and then we have Ukenbach, the Great Mistake, of course, heading up that descend mechanic in the main set. Be intrigued to see, I'm sure some people will pay off descend and commander somehow. You have lots of graveyard decks, right? Like Mold Moldroth and things like that. They can take good advantage of that. Well, here we are, Pantlaza, Sun Favored. Uh, are of course, the commander for the Dinos deck. We see it, see the Borderless version there. And then another Ukenbach. So just kind of interesting. Um, I thought it'd be fun to start with those just to see uh, what we could get out of them. Just to show you guys what, that, what those two card packs look like. And of course... Um, and the nice part is that, of course, now I have a, a couple cards for the Dino deck, if that's what I want to put them in, and a couple cards just all around, so that's pretty cool. Let's get into our set box, and I know a lot of people wait to the end, but I want to open this Treasure Trove card up right away. We have the Paleontologist there, and then a little bit on our Jurassic uh, World cards. The set booster box does say that they are 1 in 12 boosters, so I expect to get potentially 2 to 3, depending on how our ratios work out. But this is our um, Treasure Trove box topper. There is 20 of them, I believe. As far as which one I want to get, uh, I would prefer it be something like maybe Chimnil. Uh, Chimnil, the new um, Discover artifact, looks kind of fun. Coat of Arms is a card I need for a couple decks. Maybe Lightning Graves, but there's a couple interesting cards. So let's see what we get. It's a Worn Power Stone, of course, a very classic uh, artifact as far as mana producing goes. Still probably good nonetheless. Of course, used in a lot of... Uh, commander decks, uh, nonetheless, you do see a lot of War and Power Stone in, um, especially colorless decks like Eldrazi decks and things like that, because they're very good at helping you ramp up your mana. But let's get into our set boosters. We have 30 of them today uh, to open. And I'm really excited. Um, as someone who collects the art cards, it's one of my reasons to buy a set booster box, uh, but also because you do have a chance at multiple rares. I'm going to look, and okay, so... Uh, are our packs so it looks like our packs are uh, not printed in the US because we do have our foil up front so this is where normally our commons would be uh, there in the back I believe so we're gonna uh, get a little bit more fun out of the way first we have a tinker's tote in uncommon kind of an interesting card I've get to play with a couple times in draft see dire flail is a rare and that can um, flip into an equipment there on the backside which is kind of cool 
And then our first um, borderless uh, art from the set is a Scythe Claw Raptor. An interesting card. I'm intrigued to see if it sees Commander play. Uh, but I like the look of it. It's kind of cool. And then we'll just get some uh, commons and uncommons here. I do believe that if we do see any... Um, if we do see any uh, special guests, they will be in that first slot where that foil was. Uh, that will be where they show up. Now, I could be wrong on that, but that's my understanding of the way that the packs are laid out. Uh, I guess it makes sense. We have a ton of flip cards in the sense, so it makes sense that they would give us some of these guys. We she Swashbuckler's Whip. Uh, of course, the last time we were in Ixalan, we saw a lot of these um, random equipment. All right, there's the card I've been... I'm intrigued to try in Commander. Thousand Moon Smithy. When I was the battlefield, we create a gnome soldier artifact creature open with power and toughness equal to the number of artifacts and or creatures you control, so it's going to get pretty big. And then during your pre-combat main phase, you could tap five untapped artifacts or creatures you control and, and turn it over. And it turns over into Barracks of the Thousand, which taps for a white, but it also says whenever you cast an artifact or creature spell using this mana... Create a white gnome creature token with the same ability. So that's kind of interesting. I expect it's going to see some play in our, you know, white art, white, uh, white included artifact decks. Inverted iceberg. Uh, the craft cards, of course, I'm intrigued to see how they get played um, in various formats. We do see a foil version of all the caves. There's a cave now in every color that came uh, from the set. All of them have cave as a subtype. Old tap for a single color of mana, and then for five mana, you can sack them to discover four. But I'm intrigued to see how some of the crafting cards get played in our format. Um, do people take advantage of them? Do we see artifact decks taking advantage of them? Or do people only use them in certain strategies? We see a ray of ruin. Okay, there we go. We got breaches, the new breaches. Uh, very interesting card. First strike, whenever a pirate you control attacks, not even just breaches, any pirate. Choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn, so you can get up to all of them the same turn. I imagine this card's going to see some play. There we go, we got Hawkball, uh, a deck that I'm going to be brewing not only for the channel, but I'm excited to brew for myself, our uh, Merfolk Commander, uh, letting every Merfolk you control explore at the start of combat on your turn, which is pretty cool. And it says whenever it attacks, you can put a land from your card on... Uh, land from your hand on the battlefield if you don't, you draw a card. And it's sweet, we see a Tishana's Tidebinder, one of the... Um, borderless special arts they've done for the set i really like this um very colorful uh borderless style they've done but shauna's uh tie binder great for those merfolk decks comes in and can counter up to one target activated or triggered ability but it says the cool part is it says if an if an artifact creature planeswalker is countered this way that permanent loses all abilities for as long as the tie binders on the battlefield so it could be a fun way in uh, informants to shut down people's things or, or creatures or even a commander Eaten by Piranhas, love the art on that one. We see a De we see Deadway get reprinted. Hey, we have our first um, our first uh, full art land. I do really like the look of the full art lands in this set. Um, again, I do get slightly irritated sometimes. The Wizards doesn't let us get them at a little bit higher rate, uh, maybe. But uh, we we see our first one there in the swamp. I do like it though the 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 uh, underground aspect of the. Uh, the, 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 full, the basic lands there. I don't know what that card is. It is Tendril, the Mica Tyrant for our card there. Card. And we see Bartolome, the Del Prezi, uh, Tel Presidio. Uh, of course, this is a card I imagine is going to be very popular for two reasons. One, it's a sack outlet to put a counter on it. And two, it, it, uh, it is a vampire, right? Black, white vampires care a lot about that aristocrat style. But it's also a knight, which I feel like could be relevant for some decks out there. We see Tishana's Hidebinder as our as our rare for it in the regular art. Defossilize uh, is an interesting card. I don't expect it to get uh, too much play outside of limited, but bringing a creature back and then it explores twice is kind of cool. And then we see another cave. We see the white cave there. Um... I do really like the look of all the, the dinos and the things in the set that have the special art. There's the white O'Hare god, the one that uh, triples up the amount of creature tokens you create. Um, I do really like the look of the ones that we've got in the set. And of course, being someone who has always loved the dinos, I, I love seeing more. Here we see Dino Tomaton. All right, we see our first of the gods, O'Hare X and L, uh, Deepest Might. This is kind of interesting. I expect this card to see some play in those 
maybe mono red burn decks. I'd be intrigued to see whether people choose to take their um, Solfim or Tor brand decks and move them to this, or if this just slots right into the 99. But it says if a red source you control would deal an amount of non combat damage less than O'Hare XNL's power to an opponent, it deals that instead. So. Uh, this would uh, be a replacement effect to get that one or two damage up to four, which seems like a really nice ability. Especially useful for, you know, the burn, especially in Commander, because it's so much straight tougher to uh, burn out your opponents when everybody has 40 life. And another Swamp. But I'm intrigued. Uh, I think my favorite of the gods definitely is, our, is the green one. Um, of course, no surprises, me being a green player, but also has a great uh, combat hit ability. Glimpse the core there as, as a signed art card. The copy token. Pathfinding Axtra, one of our um, common dinosaurs when it comes in and explores. Had some fun with that card in draft. All right, uh, deck a card here for the dinosaur deck. Whenever one or more dinos you control attack, create that many treasures. And then whenever you cast an artifact spell, make a 3-1 token. Kind of interesting. Look, I'm hoping to try in that Pantlaza deck. And we see another one of the um, Precon commanders in uh, Cavalino, First of the Blessed, our vampire uh, commander for the deck. That looks cool. And again, I really like this frame. Two rares and that one, which is cool. A rare and a mythic. A braid, of course, getting a reprint at common. Pretty relevant for limited, but I'm sure it's also relevant for some people. Now that it's back in, it's back in standard, and I'm sure some people are wanting to use it. We see, there he is. My boy Galta is back. Or should I say, I believe it's my girl, if I recall correctly. I think Galta is female, if I recall correctly. But uh, Stampede Tyrant. I love Galta. And the new card is bonkers, and I can't wait to play with it. Brazen Blade Master. There we go. Intrepid Paleontologist. Mana Dork uh, that can add a mana of any color. Exile a card from a graveyard, and you can cast dinosaur spells that have been exiled with it. Going to be helpful in both standard and other formats. And we see Captain Storm our uh, signpost commander for the pirates in the set and going pretty good in a lot of pirate decks, especially when we are making lots of treasures. We see Canonized in Blood and uh, Bartolome again, both great cards for that, um, for that uh, vampire style. And we see Promising Vein, one in a, one in a tap to tap it to look for a basic land and it is a, it is a cave, which is relevant. Um, there are a bunch of, of course, all these new cave cards in. I'll be intrigued to see if the cave type is used, you know, too much in Commander, considering there's only so many uh, that are in the set. Here we are here with the green god, the green O'Hare, right there. O'Hare Kaslam. That's a card I'm excited about. Hopefully we see. Oh, interesting. So a Jurassic World token that's a treasure. We have Petrify. I certainly hope that doesn't count as a Jurassic World card, but I guess we'll find out. Treasure Map uh, gets a reprint in the set, which I think makes a ton of sense. Of course, in the original Exelon, tap one and tap it to scry one, and then once you do it three more times, it turns into Treasure Map, which is a land uh, that can tap for colors or sack a treasure to draw a card. And here's our first Jurassic World card. We have Welcome to, on the front side, a Saga, and that flips into Jurassic Park on the back side. That's a cool card. Trick to see... Um, if I can use it to some benefit, but um, there we go. We see our first uh, Jurassic World card, and I'm excited about that. We see a little bit of the Explore theme here in this pack, and we finally get our first island. There we go. Um, as far as the Fall Art lands go, I mean, part of me just wishes they would put them in every pack, um, especially for the people who want to have their lands match their decks or what have, you know, it becomes hard to get. This is that, uh, that vampire uh, demon, I can't remember his name. That's right, Bloodletter of Aklatots. Aklazots, sorry. Oh, our list card is Titanoth Rex. A great list card, especially for the dinosaur decks, being a big a big 11-11 for, for nine, or you can cycle it and give something a trample counter, which is pretty cool. Love seeing that that's back on the slot and the, the list, and that is for my Coria. We see Defossilize. Get Lost, a removal spell. I expect to see a ton of play in standard. Not sure about commander destroying artifact, creature, or sorry, creature, enchantment, or planeswalker in their controller makes two map tokens. Intrigued to see how much play that sees. 
um, in Commander. Kutzel's a card that I kind of like. Your opponents can't cast spells during your turn. Whenever one or more creatures you control each of power greater than its base power to combat damage to a player, draw a card. Um, I like seeing some of the cat support in this set uh, that they have a, a, a race of uh, jaguar or cat people in the set. So I'm excited. Um, I will be brewing... I will be brewing up um, Rin and Siri on the channel later this year, and so I'm excited to see if any of the new cat cards fit into that uh, Commander deck. Of course, a deck that cares a lot about cats uh, or dogs. Of course, mine, I mean, decided is going to be focused a little more on cats. That'll be coming towards the end of the year once we get done with our excellent content. I believe that's the Tishana's uh, Tie Binder. It isn't Roar of the Fifth People. Again, love the art on those. We get a Punch Out Token card. Hunter's Blowgun, and Sentinel the Nameless City. Here's another one of the new Merfolk uh, from the set. Whenever it comes in or attacks, you make a map token. The map token is one tap it to have a creature explore on this sorcery. Uh, interesting mechanic, and it's helpful because you can help spread those counters around when you're exploring. An interesting card, a 3-mana three 3-4 three, with Vigilance, I'm sure is going to work really well for... Standard. We see the Yearling, Brontodon, and the Chomps. We get a little bit of a dinosaur sub-theme in that pack, which is cool to see. There's the Basking Capybara, and then a Hidden Volcano. So I do think we've seen every cave so far. If not, it's just the blue one we can see. But... Sentinel, I'm intrigued to see if it gets played in Commander. I mean, it's great stats for what it does, and the map tokens are beneficial, especially if you can make a deck where you care about the exploring. Is this uh, a Boilo? No, just an Echo, but it is Boilo in the art. There you go, the Fungus Dinosaur. This is the token from the Skull Spore Nexus, a card that I'm excited to try out in Commander. You make a Fungus Dinosaur. You see a Razka Puzzle Door. We get Souls of the Lost, a spirit that's two mana. There's additional cost to cast a spell. You have to discard it or sack a permanent. And its power is equal to the number of permanent cards in your graveyard, and its toughness is equal to the same plus one. So kind of Lurgo of style effect, but it's on a spirit. Kind of a cool card. You see a Bartolome there in the um, a Bartolome there in the fancy art, uh, and then we see a rampaging Ceratops. Can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. Going to be darn hard to block. Don't expect it to see much play in Commander, but very useful in other formats. And we get to see Poison Dart Frog here, a card that I'm super excited to play on Arena, especially on formats like Brawl, adding one mana any color and two mana to give it Death Touch. So I like that because. You know, you you have the ability to use it for mana, and then for two mana, you can turn it into a pretty dangerous blocker um, to threaten your opponents. There's Hulking Raptors, I believe, one of the dinos, or Wrath Raptors, that's right, from the deck. Love seeing the feathers on them. There's a Vampire. Here we go, Belligerent Yearling, a foil of the um, Uncommon Dinos. This one I'm intrigued to see if it sees play in Commander. It says when another dino comes in, you can have its base power become equal to that creature's power to lend a turn. Of course, the intention there would be to have it on the battlefield and play one of our big dinos like, uh, you know, like Galto or some of those bigger guys and turn this up to a, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, 2 with Trample. Could be kind of fun. We see another Sunken Citadel there, like we saw in the, uh, in the uh, sampler pack. Lots of pirates, of course, in the set as well, being one of our four... Um, one of our four tribes of the set being uh, merfolk pirates dinos and vampires uh we did see some support for fungus as well our fungus is as well with the myco tyrant um as well as gnomes uh in that in that mono white artifact there's quintorius canned he's here in his first official planeswalker card it's a treasure memorial Nar, nar warden of the inner sky when it has three or more counters on it. It has flying and vigilance, and we can tap three untapped artifacts or creatures to put a counter on it, scry one, and we can only do a sorcery. Kind of interesting. It's a one drop, which is helpful. I expect to see some play outside of, uh, in, you know, in a few formats. There we go. Nikan Zil, uh, current conductor, uh, our signpost uncommon for Merfolk. Whenever a creature you control explores a land card, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. And then whatever you, creature you control explores a non-land card, we put a counter on Nick and Zale, which is going to get very big. Uh, and that's, of course, what we want with that strategy, right? Explore lots of plus one, plus one counters on your creatures and get big. Creating minecart looks kind of fun. Whenever it attacks, you create a treasure. So far, we are moving through. Happy to see some of the things we're getting. 
Uh, love getting access to some of these uh, ultra dark uncommons from the set. There we go. There's a card I know the new art for. This is Growing Right to Bit Lamak, a card that, of course, got very popular the first time we were in Ixalan. Of course, being a card that, when you flip it over to the backside, becomes a copy of Gaius Cradle. And we get our first special guest. I mean, we get Lord Windgrace himself. A deck I've always been very interested in building, not just because Lord Windgrace is a, is a cat and is a well-known cat from Dominaria, but just because I've always been interested in landfall decks and Jund was just one of those card, one of those um, sets of colors I always thought would be interesting. But here we see him here. He gets his reprint in this set and a special guest slot. So Wizards did announce that every set going forward is going to have special guests. Not all the special guests are going to be tied to the plane that we're visiting in the set, but some of them are. Of course, Lord, Lord Windgrace does not, being from Dominaria, but love seeing that. It definitely goes a long way to making our box worth it. We get the new Kellen, Kellen Darren Traveler. Um, the green makes X maps, where X is one plus the number of opponents who control an artifact, so at maximum you could get four off that. And then whenever it attacks, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature with mana value three or less, you put it in your hand. Otherwise, you may put it into your graveyard. It's very interesting. Um, Kellen is interesting. I think I liked his card from Wilds of Eldraine a little bit better, but I definitely like they're trying different things with his cards. Oh, and we get a Borderless Land, Restless Anchorage. So uh, we had the new Restless Cycle between Wilds of Eldraine and this set. Of course, this set got the other five we didn't get. And we get Restless Anchorage as one of them here. Uh, comes in tap, taps for one of either colors, and can be turned into a creature. And this one says whenever it attacks, you create a map token. Kind of interesting. I like the look of these. I'm sure what will happen with them is if your deck cares about something that they're doing, you're probably going to end up playing them. Sunbird Standard seems like an interesting card. It's a three-mana mana rock for any color, but you can craft it with one or more cards that share a or permanence, and it comes back in as a Sunbird Effigy. Flying Vigilance Haste, Power Tough is equal to the number of colors among the exiled cards. And it says for each color among cards exiled with it, you add a man of any color. So that's kind of interesting uh, for those four or five color decks where you maybe don't mind giving it up. We see Earthshaker Dreadmaul, this card we saw earlier. I've already seen this card seeing some play, and this card I imagine could see some uh, maybe play in Commander. It's additional cost to cast it. You sack an artifact or creature, Ward 2, and it comes in and exiles target artifact or creature until it leaves the battlefield. So it's kind of that portable hole style effect, but it has Ward 2 on it, and you have to sack something when it comes in. I still feel like that's going to end up seeing some Commander play for one mana that's pretty darn cheap. And um, the Ward 2 certainly helps. That, I believe, is Hackball himself. There we go, our Commander of the Merfolk deck. There you go. There's the Gnome Soldier that the uh, that white artifact made. Hurl into history. Queen's Bay Paladin. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, return up to one target vampire card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it, you lose life because of its mana value. It says if a creature with a finality counter on it would die, you exile instead. Kind of interesting. Again, relevant because it's a vampire and it's a knight. Um, so I'm sure that anybody who built that Sadar Jabari deck might take at least one look at Queen's Bay Paladin. But again, uh, vampires, of course, well known for. Some of them are being reanimating other vampires out of the graveyard, so that is a good ability in itself. It might be useful to some vampire decks if you could fit it into your uh, into your curve. Chart, of course, seeing a reprint is cool. This is a card that was, of course, very well used in the original Ixalan. Coming back, and you see it uh, the first time around, Chart, of course, had pirates on it. This time it has merfolk. This card I've seen a lot in uh, Draft and is kind of interesting. Adaptive Gem Guard. Tap two untap artifacts or creatures you control to put a counter on it. Uh, looks kind of interesting. And there's our blue hidden uh, cataracts. So I do believe we've seen all of our caves so far. Only one Jurassic Park card unless that Jurassic token counted for one. And I certainly hope it did not. But you quite never know. Don't know that art it is. Oh, that's right. Astral um, Ancestral Reminiscence. That's that draw spell. Another one of the flip cards. Rampaging uh, Spike Tail. So again, not all the dinos in this set are in Naya. There are some in other colors, blue and black, which is cool to see. And, I believe, and it makes a lot of sense as well, right? Uh, because we got to see the Jurassic World uh, commanders giving us lots of other colors, as well as the original Ixalan did have an uh, uh, elder dinosaur in every color. Bringer of the Last Gift, an eight mana vampire demon flying. When enters the battlefield, if you cast it, each player sacrifices all other creatures they control and then returns all creature cards from their graveyard um, that weren't put there that way to the battlefield. So this is kind of that, what, living death 
type effect where you sack everything and bring everything from your graveyard back, which could be beneficial. Notably, that is a demon as well, not just a vampire. So I imagine there are some demon decks that are going to take another look at that card as well. It is important to remember that sometimes that, um, and there we go, Captivating Cave is one of our new cave lands. It is important to remember that when cards have multiple types, it can matter, uh, especially with a, a deck like Demons, uh, where, uh, you know, a, effects like that could be really important to a Demon deck where you're trying to either um, loot or, or uh, get creatures back that died. That's that new, um, yeah, the, the Blood Letter of Owl, um, how could odds? Kind of an interesting card, uh, one of the new vampires. Hoarding Dragon off the list. When it airs a battlefield, you may search your library for an artifact card, exile it, and shuffle. And when it dies, you may put the exile card into its hand. Interesting, but it is a dragon. Altar of the Wretched, a foil rare. And this is one of the um, commander cards that are exclusive here to the set boosters, or not exclusive, but originally intended to be here in the set boosters. You can also get them in collector boosters. But it says, when it airs a battlefield, you may sacrifice a non-token creature. If you do draw X, mill X, or X is that creature's power, you can craft it with one of our creatures, and when we do, it turns into Wretched Bone Mass. Power type sequence to the total power of the card's exiled used to craft it, and it has flying as long as an exiled card used to craft it had flying. The same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Haste, Text, Proof, Indestructible, Life Link, Menace, Protection, Reach, Trample, and Vigilance. And then for three mana, you can return it from your graveyard to your hand uh, from from the rare, which is pretty cool. Interesting card. I'm sure it'll get used in some um, more sacrifice-themed decks. And we already saw the card behind it, which is Quintorius Can. Uh, Quintorius, of course, gets his first Planeswalker card um, after being seen on multiple legendary cards and being told that he was a Planeswalker. And I actually really like this card. I'm excited to use it. Whenever you cast a spell from Exile, it deals two damage to each opponent, and you gain two life. The plus one makes you a token. The minus three discovers four. And then the minus six has an interesting effect. Exile any number of target cards from your graveyard. Add red for each card exiled this way. And you may cast those cards this turn. Or play those cards this turn. I apologize because you could play lands off of it. I like this because this is kind of a pseudo... Um, it's kind of a pseudo Mizzix Mastery style effect. Of course, you don't get to cast them for free, but you do get to cast them. You can get lands this way. Um, but again, very interesting. You can get creatures back this way. I think it's interesting... Um, it's an interesting effect for that, but it also you then are casting them out of exile, so you get to take advantage of a static ability, which makes a ton of sense. Let me see uh, Full Art Forest. So I believe uh, we have not seen a plains or, or a uh, mountain yet on those. There's that uh, Oakenbach, the great mistake. One of the Descend legendaries in the set. We see a Fungus token. Haslam Stone Tree. All right, well, this is a card I was hoping to pull. Deep Root Pilgrimage, the new um, Deep Root enchantment from this set. Whenever one of our non-token merfolk you control become tap, put a 1-1 one, one blue merfolk token with hexproof onto the battlefield. Like that one, of course, very beneficial in the merfolk decks like Kumena, where you're tapping for abilities. So that's going to see lots of play, I'm sure. See a little bit of pirate sub-theme there. Making our way through the box. I think we've done very well, of course, getting that special guest and the wind grace was great. That's going to help out a ton with, of course, getting the value back from the box. Here's a card I'm excited to try out. Contest of Claws. Um, a fight spell. And if you do access to, or, uh, a damage, like a bite type of effect where your creature you control does damage equal to their power to another creature. And if you deal excess damage, you discover that much, which is pretty darn cool in a deck where you're going to have big creatures. And I'm actually taking a look at looking to put that one in multiple green decks. Watley First Strike is kind of an interesting card. And there it is. We saw the art card, and we got it. Growing Rights of Itlamok. When it comes in, look at the top four. Put a creature from one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom. At the beginning of your end step, if you have four more creatures, you transform it into Itlamok. Cradle of the Sun, a effective uh, reprint of Gaia's Cradle. Tapping for either green or green for each creature you control. Love seeing that card get reprinted, especially because of... Um, how popular it was in the original Ixalan, being definitely one of the chase cards from that set. For again, it effectively being a reprint of Gaius Cradle on the back, which is important for your decks like Elves and things like that where you're going really wide. There's a melee, I believe. Got a right card. Another punch out token. Acrobatic Leap. 
And there we go, another one of our dinos, Pugnacious Hammer Skull, a three mana six six. Gonna see lots playing standard, I'm sure. But whenever it attacks, if you don't control another dinosaur, you put a stun counter on it. I expect this to see some love in standard in those mono green and dinos builds, but I actually expect this to see some could see some play in a deck like one of my favorite decks of all time, Gore Claw or some of the dinosaur builds because a two mana six six is very much worth the um the payment especially if you have enough dinos to make it not have a stun counter there's the um showcase for the ukenbach armored kin collar and cavern stomper with some of our dinos there from the main set um yeah a lot of the uncommon and common dinosaurs from the set probably aren't going to see a ton of commander play but I am excited to see them, of course, nonetheless, because then that means that you're going to have a better chance at having more dinos for your historic brawl decks and arena or other things like that. There's um, Clavelano, our commander for the vampire precon. Ixalan's Binding. Well, I mean, it makes sense. Card originally printed in Ixalan. When it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent opponent controls. But you get an added benefit of your opponents can't cast spells with the same name as the exiled card. Um... This is kind of fun because if you play this in Commander and you do target someone's Commander with this, if they choose to put their Commander back into the Command Zone, this should still see that you exiled it. Uh, and then it wouldn't let them recast it. If, I were, if, I, if I'm reading that correctly, that would be the way that would work. Tully's Favor. We see Matt Zelanti, the Great Door, draw and discard. And for four mana, we can transform it. Act only if there are four more permanent types among cards in your graveyard and it transforms into the core of course where um, so much of the set this time revolves around we tap to add x man of any one color where x is the number of permanent cards in your graveyard kind of an interesting thing i don't know if that'll see some play in different types of decks but definitely interesting nonetheless and there we go another jurassic world card dino dna imprint one tap it to exile target creature card from a graveyard and six mana to create a token that's a copy of target creature card exiled with dino DNA. So it's a six six green dinosaur creature token instead, activate only as a sorcery. Uh, this is kind of fun because uh, it is an artifact, so it, it could see playing a lot of artifact decks, take people's creatures and make copies of them. Uh, but very interesting card nonetheless. I'm excited again to see another Jurassic World card that we got access to here. I wasn't quite sure what the ratios were going to look like, but we've already gotten two, um, which is pretty cool. Another full art forest there. We are getting towards the end of our box. Um, I'm liking it so far. I think we're getting good value. Uh, that Pulling that wind grace has made me want to... I mean, as, that was a commander that I've been wanting to revisit for a while. But now that I've pulled it, it might be something I definitely do. Here's Resplendent Angel getting its reprint in this set. Of course, a very popular angel for those uh, life gain strategies. Especially for the angel life gain strategies. There we are, Restless Reef. One of the new restless lands there in foil. Here we go. Here's the dino I was hoping to see. Trumpeting Carnosaur. Six mana, seven, six of the trample. And then when it comes in, you discover five. Or you can pitch it from your hand to do a three damage to turn creature points. So discover five is just like Cascade. Uh, you look for a spell with mana value X being five or less. But instead of um, casting it for free, you also have the option to put it in your hand. Which is still very beneficial, especially if you hit something you want to save for later. And there we go, there's our um, first planes with that pretty um, flying dinosaur on it. So I believe all we have left that we haven't seen is a mountain as far as our, for, for as far as our first art, our full art lands go. I don't know what that one is. Might of the Ancestors. Okay, another, another Jurassic World token. I really hope that these don't count, uh, but I have a gut feeling that they might, and I really hope they don't, because if so, that's a big sad that... Uh, that's something that I got two of. Sanguine Evangelist, uh, kind of an interesting card. Battle Cry, whenever it enters the battlefield or dies, make a 1 1 bat. But hey, Battle Cries can be important depending on how many creatures you have. And Magmatic Galley, and a fun vehicle for the vehicle guys out there. Five damage to target creature and opponent controls when it comes in. And then one or more creatures your opponent control, got excess damage, non combat damage, you create a treasure. I could see this being used in those Mono Red Burn decks just to help net some mana uh, when you utilize uh, all your spells. We see another Kutzel there. 
Love seeing uh, another flying, some of the flying dinosaurs. I love Kinjali Sunwing, one of the original flying dinosaurs from uh, Ixalan. That was a dinosaur that had your opponent's creatures come in uh, tab, but still one of my favorites as far as our original dinos go. This is, uh, I don't remember the name of it, this is the green white restless land that makes the llama tokens, restless prairie. There is the angel token from um, Resplendent Angel, from the Crave Worm. Oh, a Nimpakal. This is a card I'm excited to try out. Uh, this is immediately going to go get tried out in my Jetmere deck, a tokens deck, but I think this could even be a fun historic brawl commander. Whenever you attack with one or more non gnome creatures, put a plus one plus one counter on a Nimpakal, then create X one one colorless gnome artifact creature tokens that are tapped and attacking, or X is the number of counters on a Nimpakal. It's a very interesting card. Reminds me a teeny bit of something like Winota, where you're getting a benefit for creatures attacking. And this, of course, would slot very quickly into a Winota deck, I'm sure. But I like this card. I think this card's really fun. And hey, another one of our Commander uh, set booster cards, Paleontologist Pickaxe. Whenever the cool creature attacks, you draw and then discard a quick one. We can craft it with one or more creatures. And it becomes Dinosaur Headdress. Whenever it enters the battlefield, attach it to the target creature we control. As it becomes attached to a creature, choose an exiled creature card used to craft it, and equip a, a creature as a copy of the last chosen card and equip two. There's our um, another full art, uh, uncommon, Thrashing Brontodon sees the reprint. Of course, beneficial because you get to sacrifice it, destroy an artifact or enchantment, which of course is very important in a lot of formats. I'm sure it'll be important in a format um, like standard now with how many artifacts and enchantments are out there, but of course in Commander it's still equally as important because... Artifacts especially are so important to uh, decks getting enough mana. There's the, uh, I believe, the white O'Hare, the one that triples up on the tokens, the creature tokens you make. Deadly Dispute, off the list, great card. And of course, uh, I believe it's about a dollar card. Sacrifice an artifact or creature when you cast it, draw two and make a treasure. Of course, great in the... Um, it's going to be great in these modern, in these vampire decks that people are going to be making out of the set. Um, because it's going to, t you know, get those aristocrat death triggers to happen, which is great. Skull Scap Snail. Kite Sail Arsonist, is, I've heard people talking about, and going to be great for any pirate deck, um, in Commander, or even a human deck, nonetheless. Flying Ward 1, when it enters, for each player, choose up to one target artifact or creature, and for as long as our, uh, Kite Sail's out, they become treasures. This is cool. Got to see Jimmy uh, use this card on game nights to some... Effect. Just kind of an interesting card, and I expect to see some play. And there we go, another belligerent yearling. Again, that's one of those cards that I think is going to go well in your pirate lists if you're upgrading the precon or you're playing with brass or even Malcolm and Breaches. It's a card that's going to be pretty helpful, helping to shut your opponents down a little bit, target something they have, and turn it into a treasure. Uh, is that treasure map? Nope, just a map token. Uh, another gnome. Different one, though. Wind, Water Wind Scout. And there we are, Blood Letter of El um, Aklatots, Aklazots. Four mana vampire demon flying. If an opponent would lose life during your turn, they lose twice that much life instead, and damage does call loss of life. This is a fun card. I expect this to be played in a lot of vampire decks. Um, especially those um, aristocraty type vampire decks where you're using your, um, you know, uh, Bastion of Remembrances and type things. But I also, that is a demon. I expect this to be a card that very quickly slots into something like Bellicor, uh, a deck where you're trying to damage your opponents when your demons come in. So that's a great card. And we got another um, Jurassic World card. And I just joked about this card earlier, having Samuel L. Jackson himself on a permission denied. Counter target non creature spell. Your opponents can't cast non creature spells this turn cool card we get to see it here oh boy multiple rare pack i believe we have four of them borderless um kellen daring traveler our kellen from the set which we got to see a little bit earlier oh okay just an uncommon there earth shaker dread maw all right a three rare pack we will take it we want as many of those as we can get especially when you get um multiple rares and a mythic but hey another uh, Jurassic world card so we are up to three on the box so i'm now thinking that those tokens probably don't matter now when it comes to determining uh, how many Jurassic worlds cards you get uh not sure on that one cosmium blast still love the art um i'm someone who collects the art cards just because i love looking at the art snad card Deep Goblin Skull Taker. There it is, the regular version of the Re Reckless uh, Restless Anchorage. 
Captain Storm there. I'm intrigued to see how much Captain Storm gets played in Commander. I mean, it's a it's a great card. It's going to help out in those pirate decks, especially because you still need to hit your opponents. Three packs left. We've got plenty of value so far, but let's see what else we can get. There's Cloudlanio in the showcase art. Okay, I, I flipped this up, and I, for a second I thought it was Roaming Throne, and I was excited because that's a card I'm hoping for. But Crystalline Crawler, this is from C16. When it enters the battlefield with, it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter for each color of mana spent to cast it, remove a counter from it to add a mana of any color to your mana pool and put a counter on it and tap it. Oh, interesting card off the list. Bring Sun Calvary. And there we are, the new um, the new big artifact, the one I talked about when we talked about our box topper there. Chimel the Inner Sun, a six mana legendary artifact that says creature or spells we can control can't be countered. At the beginning of our end step, we discover five. This is a card I'm intrigued to see if people play in their artifact decks. I think it's probably worth it, especially if you can cheat your artifacts out for cheaper. And you never quite know what you're gonna get off of Discover Five. And we see a restless fence, another restless land. This is the black one. Whenever it attacks, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Or red-black, I apologize. And it's immediately followed up by Zoyawa, um, the uh, signpost uncommon for red-black in the set. Kind of an interesting card. We see Contested Game Ball there. We've got a regular one in the same pack. Another cave. All right, well, we got a couple of the Restless uh, lands in this box. I'm intrigued to see how the Restless lands get played. I mean, I wouldn't turn down playing them in a deck that I already have um, the colors in because uh, it could be very beneficial to play extra lands that can be animated depending on how much mana you have. Focus of Enlightenment. Other map tokens. C-Note Scout. That's when I expect to see some standard play when it comes in and explores. One one that could be a 2-2 two -two just for one mana. There's a Buelo's Awakening. X3 and a white to return target artifact or non or enchantment. Card from your graveyard to the battlefield with X additional plus one plus one counters on it. It's 1-1 one, one spirit and additional to other types. So a little bit of uh, way to get enchantments or that aren't auras and artifacts back from your graveyard, which could be pretty cool. And that makes sense. So much of the lore hold um, strategy on Strixhaven and Quintorius uh, has been about getting things back out of your graveyard. So that makes a ton of sense. Spring Loaded Saw Blades, two mana, five, five to a tap creature. We see some more dinos down there. And our last pack, hopefully we get something cool. If not, uh, just, I've I had a ton of fun opening this up so far. Seeing uh, the new cards has made me really happy. So excited to brew around the channel. Those videos will be coming starting this week with our dinosaurs, Walk with the Ancestors. Uh, for the future, when a set comes out, I will always have people vote on what they want to see first. And this week, um, this this set, Dinos won. So dinos are coming up first. A card I love to see, Pemmin's Aura. Off the list, this is a fun card for decks where you have creatures that care about being tapped. Uh, blue to untap it, blue to give it flying, and blue to make it um, hexproof. Of course, a card that pairs really well with um, creatures that can tap for a bunch of mana to make them go nearly infinite to give you a bunch of mana. Staggering size. Preacher of the Schism on the new vampires. Whenever it attacks the player with the most life or tied for the most life, make a 1-1 token. Whenever it attacks while you have the most life or tied for the most life, you draw a card and lose a life. But it has Death Touch, 3 mana, 2, 4. Kind of interesting. Another, another um, It's Gwent, Firstborn of Gishath in the Borderless. And that... Rounds out our box. They foil the mountain. We finally got there. All five of the basic land styles. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Only eight basic lands. So what? One in three. Almost one in four had the foil basics. But let me know what did you think of our set booster box opening. I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed opening it up. Seeing some of the fun cards. And what we got access to. We ended up with, let's see. One. Two. three Jurassic World cards, and a special guest and Lord Windgrace. Stoked to see that. Hopefully I can use that for something, and maybe this will be my excuse to finally build Windgrace or pursue building Windgrace. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.